So we're over here at Wilco with my friend Craig here. Thanks for having us in today, man. It well, is welcome. a great time of year for vegetables. 100%. Now going forward, um, I think most of these people that have their beds ready. If not, you can prepare your beds. You know, we've got, uh, you know, vegetables, herbs, organic, non-organic, uh, the tomatoes, uh, peppers. Um, yeah, we're ready to go. Potatoes, onions, nice. we're ready to go. Yeah, it's, it's I know exciting. People have, been, people have been scared to plant, right? Because our weather has been like all Absolutely. over the place. Absolutely. We're we pretty safe now? Oh, I think so going forward. I think the overnight temperatures was something that we were real worried about. I think going forward, I think next week, I don't think we get anything below like the mid upper 40s going into 50s is perfect. Okay. So planting lawn seed, you know, planting your annuals to add instant color, um, hanging baskets to, of course, our uh, wonderful tomatoes and herbs. Um, yeah, and then just protecting them. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. What kind of tips do you have for people out there that are like, all right, I've never done a garden before. I want to plant something. What kind of, where should people start with that? Uh, just get really good soil because, you know, the typical with, with, with everything, nutrients for the soil is, is paramount, especially with the vegetables. You know, depending upon how much room you have, I mean, you can make a wonderful garden um, in, you know, a small raised bed. If you've got a condo, um, you can do that. Or if you've got a large, expansive area, you can go all the way to using corn. But there's, you know, you know, since everything that's gone on in the last four or five years, new generation of, of gardeners. And so, and then, you know, people want to know what they put in their vegetables. And so I'm, I'm a horticulturist, so I like to use as much organic as possible, fertilizing with organic mm -hmm. fertilizers, any uh, disease proof, I try to use as much organics. And the wonderful thing here at Wilco is we have that. Nice. So we have some amazing soil, fertilizers with chicken manure, steer manure, which are organic. Um, the soils, uh, a wonderful array of plants, vegetables, regardless um, of uh, from collard greens to onions. Uh, so it's wonderful. Nice sunshine. It's always a big deal with where you plant these things, right? Big time. With vegetables, time. what's the best idea with that? What's a good placement? Full sun, full sun, and oh by the way, full sun. Yeah, <laughs> full sun. You know, you could go with a variety of things. Hand watering, setting up a watering system to it. You know, some of these are a little bit more particular on what your watering schedules are. Yeah. Um, now going forward, we didn't get a spring last year. Mm -hmm. This year, wonderful. We got a spring. I see sun in the air. Yeah, pretty excited. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, outside of vegetables, I know hanging baskets. It's like hanging basket season with Mother's Day right around the corner. One hundred percent. And so we've got a array of, uh, you know, with fuchsias, with calabacoa with geraniums, all the instant color. Mother's Day's coming up, a rather important day. Absolutely, we never want You to and I mom. wouldn't be here if mom wasn't Gotta involved. Gotta give mom a lot of credit. Gotta take, you know, they're, they're beautiful, they're now, they're, they're not to the point that they're past the bloom, it's perfect timing, because there'll be mm -hmm. more blooms coming, you know, with mother nature, a little bit of fertilizing, we have the fertilizing to keep them nice and fresh longer. Um, but yeah, over, over time, we'll have a ton of incoming, I'll have as many as 200 hanging baskets in here. Um, it's wonderful, nice. wonderful, wonderful. I wanted to talk about roses. Should we go over there? Because I mean, this is the Rose City, right? Let's go take a look yes, at some roses. Because I'm, bet. I'm excited about these. I've always been a rose guy, right? Yeah. All right, we're in one of my favorite areas, that rose garden here that you guys have. Let's talk about roses a little bit, because these are sure. beautiful, and I love planting roses. Absolutely. Well, we are in Rose City, and so, you know, it's, Hopefully there's a misnomer about they can be rather picky. Uh, put in the right soil, um, they do wonderful around here. Clipping them down at the end of the season, January, and then they're starting to get the bulbs. They're starting to just, you know, bloom out. They're absolutely looking gorgeous this time of year. And this is about where they should be from the climbers mm -hmm. to the hybrid teas. We've got some originals, uh, you know, from Mr. Lincoln mm -hmm. to a variety of different names, because there's hundreds of names. Yeah. that we have here, so with the beautiful blooms. But yeah, you know, this this time of year, you know, it's similar to like maples. Maples and roses, it kind of goes with Oregon. Well, I was gonna grab a couple of these, like, uh, you know, the Sugar Moon or Mr. Lincoln and go home and sure. take these and put it in the ground. What should I do? Because I know there's a little prep you should do before you just dig a hole and drop them in. 
So typically with this, basically what we'd want to do is we want to double the width of the hole and double the depth. Okay. Put some really good nutrient soil. I don't like a whole lot of alkalinity, so some good topsoil that you can use, organic if, if at all possible, low alkalinity. Um, and you know, plant that, plant that firm. Typically I plant my roses about half an inch to an inch up above the soil. So okay. when it waters, they don't like their feet wet, which is the roots mm -hmm. wet. And while I'm planting it, I'm massaging the roots so that it comes out, um, gently massaging that, then putting in there, I'll typically put a, like a bone meal or a blood meal in it, mm -hmm. kind of protects the roots, um, plant it, and then I do a little thing differently. I put a little bone meal or blood meal in it, and then I kind of massage it in the soil, and then I water it in. Okay. You know, and so if you're trying to make a spread on there, you know, give it, look at its maturity length. And so okay. if that's gonna be three to four feet wide, Probably go four foot width before you plant the second one and do the exact same thing. Plant it, water it, and you're ready to go. Typically with roses, they like to be watered in the morning, okay. and not at night. If you're gonna be uh, spraying uh, like a horticultural oil, do it early in the morning so it'll stay away from any honeybees or mason bees or butterflies. Okay. So if you get them, you know, maybe yours didn't do so well over the winter, you know, and you've got, you're gonna plant some new ones in, what should they be doing right now to take care of the existing roses that they have? So you can use a systemic, so Bayer uses systemic, so a systemic is a three-in-one, so that is a fertilizer, it fights fungicide, miticide, and insects. You can put that around, um, you can cut back any of the disease, mm -hmm. um, come it down, so typically I, I do a hard prune, but typically about anywhere from 12 to 14 inches, cut them down, um, put that down there. I typically copper fungicide everything, so for any potential diseases mm -hmm. that could potentially come, that attaches um, to the plant and it just protects it. Um, and then water it, get that uh, fertilizer in. Typically you can bring those back. Roses are really hardy. Okay. That's why they do so well here. Got We're it. in kind of our microclimate here. You know, it's different here than it is in Bend. And so with us, we get a little bit of the humidity, we get some moisture. You, roses need well-draining soil, so I'll add a little bit of sand to it mm -hmm. so that it's well-draining, then it's perfect. Nice, nice. That is some, those are some great tips for us right oh, there on you. roses. Should we talk about some trees a little bit? Absolutely. All right, Craig, it's fruit tree season, and this is beautiful, man. Yeah, I've got some wonderful apples and some um, cherries, and they're starting to bloom. We're starting to see our first sign of mason bees and butterflies and bumblebees and, and hummingbirds. I got a friend hummingbird that comes in. He <laughs> likes to follow me around watering. Yeah, nice. it's a wonderful time of year. Yeah, things are starting to bloom. Roses are looking prime. These guys are looking absolutely gorgeous. Gives the customer kind of a good idea of what they're gonna look like in their yard. Nice. That's kind of you know our job to see what we can do to try to help them. Yeah. And what it's gonna look like in their yard. It's, uh, yeah, it's a wonderful time of year. Nice, what are some tips for planting fruit trees? Because I know trees are different, but you know, in our climate, it's a little bit different than like sure. over on the eastern side where it's fruit tree land. Are there any tips for, for the west so, side of the mountains? Soil, 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 soil. So with these guys, they're gonna need, you know, a lot of these are larger. You know, some of these are 12, 15 gallon pots. You're going to be doubling the width. You're going to put, be putting a lot of bone meal and blood meal in it. And it's all about the nutrients to get in here, to grow the blooms, to have the bees there, to pollinate uh, the plants. It's, yeah, putting all those beneficial plants in there so that the honeybees, the hummingbirds, and the butterflies pollinate it so that we can get some fruit. Yeah. Um, this is perfect time of year um, to have, you know, fruit trees. How about sun for these? Full sun again? Same 100 percent full sun. Um, that's why the nutrients are so important. Same thing. Um, I typically like to plant them just up above the ground, so that the soil. Same same theory as with the roses. Um, you're going to massage those roots out. You're going to plant them. Plant them nice and solid. Um, put a little bit of bone meal or blood meal on it. You're going to wait for probably a good month, month and a half before you like to fertilize, let them get acclimated okay. to your yard, then fertilize. If it's a peach, you probably want to put a dormant spray on it so you don't have any leaf curl. Mm -hmm. We've got some wonderful horticultural oil. Nice, anything else, Craig? Thanks for coming and oh, having you, us come in today, man. Oh, we really appreciate having you in. So we, uh, 
Thank you, Eric, for coming in. I know you're a regular customer, so thank you for that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to the up and coming season now that it's here. Exactly. <laughs> Guys, spring is here. It's time to start planting. And let's see those gardens out there because you know something? It's the right time of year to do it.